I started brewing, thanks to bitter and esters, um, and quickly got into wild fermentation and um, pretty quickly started doing, I guess, just for something to write. I've always been a writer, that's my background, is, is in writing. Um, so once I got started brewing, I just started writing about brewing, and I started a uh, home brewing blog, home brewing blog called, and don't ask me why, because I actually don't have any answer for this at all. It's called Bear Flavored Ales. Bear Flavored is the name of the blog. Um, like a bear. Like a, you know, like a bear, yeah. Um, yeah, I need to change all my handles to just like Derek Dellinger, because at this point I, just, I, don't, I don't even have a story for it. It's just like a random thing I thought of. Um, so doing the homebrewing blog for a couple of years, and I helped uh, to run a uh, homebrew shop up in the Hudson Valley, and was just kind of like getting into the Hudson Valley beer scene, and a couple of friends were opening breweries, and I was thinking about opening a brewery myself, because every American citizen is required to think about opening a brewery themselves. <laughs> um, and as I was like juggling like three different ideas for possible breweries to open myself, brewery opening in Connecticut, reached out to me and uh, wanted to know if I was interested in joining them. Um, and it seemed like they were, they wanted to do the sort of beers that I wanted to do, so that's how I got involved with Kent Falls. Um, and we started just kind of like, I was originally going to just kind of do their, help them essentially as a consultant with their wild fermentation program. Um, and uh, yeah, and then just eventually became the, the head brewer. Um, but we started out like culturing a bunch of different wild yeast uh, cultures from the farm. So we released a beer the other month called Fingerprint. Um, that's just, I walked around the farm with a jar. I'm kind of using ideas I got while doing this book. Just thought like, oh, it'd be cool to just throw a bunch of things in a jar, ferment them, you know, the same way I'd ferment any other vegetable or something and then take that culture, throw it into a, uh, you know, a starter, the way that you prop up yeast for a starter for beer, and then I just kept propping it up and um, eventually brewing beer with it, and then we uh, added that into barrels that have released since our like, first uh, all local ingredients, local yeast culture, indigenous wild ale. So it's not, not, you know, not a land that got spontaneously fermented beer. We have done some spontaneously fermented beer as well, uh, that haven't been released, but it's uh, kind of an indigenous sour wild ale. Um, and I did a couple other yeast culture things like that. Um, so we have a, a small but decent barrel program of a lot of like kind of wild yeast culture things, uh, you know, mostly farmhouse sales, saisons with uh, local ingredients and just focusing on fermentation and uh, you know, indigenous uh, microbial qualities. Um, but mainly we make uh, saisons and IPAs. The, Two things that you drink in here tonight. Uh, make a lot of 100% Brett beers. Uh, everything is pretty much that color and low ABV and just pale and dry and hopefully drinkable. Uh, and the goal is pretty much to make simple, sessionable beers that are, you know, hopefully approachable to any any kind of beer drinker or any kind of drinker at all. We get a lot of positive feedback from wine drinkers, which pleases me. How many barrels? Uh, uh, 15 barrel system, 30 barrel tanks. Uh, actually, a fairly large brewery for a new brewery. We're a lot bigger than um, most of the new breweries opening up, for better or worse. It was, uh, I mean, I actually didn't, I almost didn't take the job for several months because I was just a home brewer. Like, I didn't have a professional brewing background, and it's a fairly sizable brewer, brewery. Uh, and we had a very, very good consultant, uh, Dan Suarez, who's since opened up his own brewery in the Hudson Valley. You saw his family brewery, and he's probably one of the best brewers in the whole region. Yeah. He's super talented. Also makes super, yeah, very like-minded brewer in that he's trying to make only session, drinkable, approachable, low ABV beers. But well, you guys um, have taken off. I mean, the word just came out like, oh, Kent Falls. Yeah. That has arrived with a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, the beers are excellent. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So. Um, yeah, just, I mean, I, I pretty much just tried to make what I made as a home brewer, what I wanted to make and drink, um, just kind of like drinkable beers, but focusing on fermentation and hop nuances. And, um, so everything's usually a pretty simple recipe, only most, most of the beers are, are just Pilsner malt and wheat. 
almost almost all of them are just pills from malt and wheat. Um, no adjuncts. No usual malt malts. Or? Yeah, I, I I've never used crystal malt at Kempfels. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that might not be true. We have done a couple dark beers that had like a higher roast crystal malt in, but um, they haven't done a ton of dark beers. Um, not because I don't like dark beers. I do like dark beers a lot. Just have only gotten around making a couple. Um, for a while, it's like jug like three different tanks with three different yeast cultures. I mean, all, many experiences that were really interesting adapting to. And maybe, well, probably with a lot of things we only tried because none of us had professional brewing background. So we were, we only did them because we were dumb enough to think that we could. Um, like somehow it made them work. Um, so we had three yeast cultures and three tanks, which was difficult to juggle. Um, in the sense that it limited a lot of what we could do. We actually didn't make any clean beers for the first like six months or so. Um, we didn't make any IPAs or pale or anything like that. Um, because we started out, well I guess we started out with two yeast cultures and three tanks, but we were juggling between Saison cultures and Brett cultures. And so for a while it just like wasn't practical to make a dark beer because it would have had to be, we did make like 100% Brett dark strong ale. Um, they were actually releasing some of the variants of this weekend. Um, aged, it made like 100% Brett dark strong ale aged some in bourbon barrels, some in wine barrels, some in bourbon barrels with blueberries, some in some all on second use peaches with soury microbes from a sour saison aged on peaches. We got racked onto the peaches second use and then from the peaches we transferred it into peach brandy barrels. Um, that sounds like home brewers. <laughs> yeah I mean again for better or worse a lot of these ideas just like oh so we've got these barrels let's do this and it's just like juggling like a million mm -hmm. things um, but that's part of the reason why I mean and I think that it is at least a smart approach to take with you know, easing into a brewery is there's a lot of nuance and variety you can showcase by just using different hop varieties and tweaking fermentation flavor I made a ton of different beers by name at, at Kent Falls so far in the year and a half I've been doing it um, but stylistically a fairly narrow range like I, I've at least use that to kind of comfort myself of like, I'm not trying to make every single style of beer out, you know, I'm not making 70 different styles of beer. I'm really only making three, four, five styles of beer, but tweak to showcase how much variety you can get from just simple ingredients and like a straightforward approach. I kind of see that a lot in Hudson Valley, like, like Catskill Brewery. Yeah, and like yeah. And those breweries, they have like exactly what you just described. Right, and you do want to kind of have a focus, like, you know, they're I all think great for though. branding, yeah, you want to kind of like, you want to have a focus at least starting at you know we don't have a brew pub we don't have a tap room actually which is really difficult but you know we don't really have a call to be like oh we need to have every style of beer out there represented or people in the tap room are going to complain right. you know it, we're very much not a brew pub we're the total opposite so it's allowed us to be eclectic and varied but also very focused too uh, i like that mentality that's a very upstate like yeah cat skills right yeah i mean yeah i guess it's uh, so a lot of like Grimm is, is I would say like that and you know yeah. other half to some extent like it's, yeah. you with the barrel beers do you do blending? Um, as much as possible I mean it's such a small program that was my intention originally a lot of things you're like you have these grandiose plans for it and I was like oh it's gonna be this like you know 20 oak barrels like elaborate Solera blending program but I mean it, it's we just haven't packaged that much yet and generally it's kind of hard to pull that off and like maintain cons or have any sort of consistency and generally it just ends up being like oh okay we can package one or two maybe barrels of beer uh, and also as far as releasing that stuff like with the barrel age stuff being a small brewery with no like we have just a weird setup and distribution and everything like we don't want to like package a ton of sour beer and flood the market with it it's more like okay we can release like you know, 40 cases at a time that ends up being like one barrel. Um, and it's also because like we'll get a set amount of local fruit and there just isn't more. So we can stuff that into one barrel and have like one special release. And it, it's, you know, it's allowed us to do a lot of cool individual projects, but you know, it's, it's not, a, it's, it's going to grow into a much more elaborate um, barrel, barrel program over time. But for now, it's been pretty kind of all things with doing with a brewery, I guess, like you do what you can with what you have. Um, so you're always going to be limited, starting out at least, by a lot of factors of just like what you can kind of get away with. They're actually a farm, right? 
And we're actually a farm, yeah. So, so what's the main crop on the farm? It's, I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of a weird farm. Like, it's pretty small. There's really only like a couple usable acres. So we do have like uh, about an acre of hops, which would be the main crop. But that, all, that, I mean, that only provides enough hops, at least so far, in the harvest for one year. Um, so we do a harvest saison. I didn't want to do like a drip. Uh, I didn't want to do a wet hop IPA because it's kind of what everyone does. And being a word like farmhouse brewery that does a lot of farmhouse beer, but a wet, wet hopped uh, mixed culture farmhouse sale would be cool. So we do that every year at our hop harvest. Um, and then the farm also just has uh, livestock, so it's chickens, eggs, pigs. Um, do you feed them the uh, spank rain? Uh, they don't like it, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, it's weird. Like, I mean, other people yeah. seem to have luck with it, but I don't know if it's just because, like, we have kind of good, like, swampy. F they're, the fields are, like, not good for growing crops, but seem to have a lot of nutritional value for the animals. And, you know, a lot of grub, stuff like that. that the, they'll kind of just ignore it and, like, eat other things. Uh, and so we mostly compost the spank rain. I mean, it still just goes right up. I roll out the grain hopper, pick it up with the tractor, or roll it back, and you get you guys compost the little bit. But um, maybe they want crystal ball. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's probably it's like probably very dry, boring. <laughs> um, it seems like you guys. I was just reading the other day, like you sort of involve the community, like the the harp, the mm -hmm. hop harvest is like. Yeah, we try and have people come out. Really, just for the the, the, the free labor. labor. Yeah. 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 does that, and it's like. You guys are brilliant. You just yeah, yeah. Just they, actually, they actually pay us to come because <laughs> it's a pig roast. So, uh, oh, right. We give up, we give them beer right. and yeah. roast the pig for them, yeah, for but they work. give us, they pay us to work for us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but it gets people involved. Well, and I, well, it, to me, it's just a normal day at work. Like I'm just in the brewery brewing because I have to make the saison thing. So for me, it's a day of work in which like. 50 times more people than usual 50 interns are <laughs> watching, yeah, right. are just standing over their shoulder, I guess, you know, with that pipe yeah. for. What are you doing now? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty fun. So I put my hand in the yeah. yeah. So, well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.